thank you, Simon, for the most generous introduction. I didn't feel like it was me. <laughs> um, it's great to be here with Hope Poison Place. I always feel like it's such a special place to be reading here and also to, to come to a reading by Poets and Players. And it's great to be reading with Claire and also Holly. And thank you for the music. The group piece was really special for me, so I was really moved by that. Um, um, I'm going to read from my new book of poems uh, called The In Cloud Reader. Um, it's going to be coming out next year with Carcanet. Um, initially, I thought I was going to read a selection of poems from, from this new book, but given the recent event uh, in Manchester Chinese Consulate, um, I thought I'm going to focus on the middle section of this book, um, which, is, which has a title called Hong Kong, China. Uh, the section has an epigraph. It's from a Chinese, uh, actually Hong Kong novelist called CC, from her wonderful novel called My City. In this city, every day there is this and that. Things quietly depart, gradually disappear. I'm going to start with a poem called Mother's Ink, and it has an epigraph by Katrina O'Reilly. Somewhere in the prehistory of ink is reproduction. Mother's Ink Born I was and wasn't. She drew breath from the breath she'd lost to phantom explosions inside her. Three days, three nights, all breaths and no food or sleep. What other mothers had done, she did, restaging the contractions until my departure. I saw what she saw, a cloud of messy flesh waiting at the gate, redder than ink. The hard plastic on suction cap, my misshapen head. What she remembered, I remembered. A cloudless day at 3 p.m. And no ink was spilled as she kept herself to herself. Now and then, words escaped from her bleached hands. She knew I wanted ink greedily. She fed it to me, dark milk diluted with water, that when it touched a page, spread. She knew it came from the clouds, hiding the tear gas and bullets. She only wanted good ink for me, but feared what it meant. I wanted just ink for her. I wanted ink more than her. The second poem is called Raw Materials and it documents the events that took place between the 25th and the 30th of March 2021 in Hong Kong. Day 1 a friend of a friend is shuffled out of a radio show. Another mouth shut. Another man's whereabouts unknown. His due nationality scrapped. Day two. A bookseller is accused of crowdfunding a protest. Evidence of systemic failure destroyed. Burberry is boycotted by some stars. Government tells 14 countries to deny the legality of a passport. Day 3. A law firm is ordered to disband because they defend a case. 
a university access a photo expression. Day 4. Someone suspends a talk show. Someone cancels a documentary. Someone bans the Oscars. Someone restricts someone's access to something official. Day 5. Another man is hurt and charged. A law amended. Police empowered. Election candidates screened. I'm going to read a poem called 247, A Hong Kong Space Odyssey. Um, 2047 has a very special meaning for uh, Hong Kong people because in 1997, when Hong Kong was handed over to mainland China, uh, the city was promised unchanged uh, on the grounds of basic law and the joint declaration signed by Deng Xiaoping and Margaret Thatcher. Uh, unchanged for 50 years, we were told, and we, it therefore has an expiry date of 2047. Um, this poem, in a way, is a homage to Stanley Kubrick's uh, wonderful film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, it has an epigraph between Bowman, the main character, and how 2000, which is the machine on the spacecraft. Bowman says, Open the port bay door, how? How 9000 says, I am sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. This is a poem for my sister. 2047, A Hong Kong Space Odyssey. I too can't open that door, can't lend a hand, can't. Two years from being a septuagenarian, time never elegizes. We keep waiting, my sister and I, at the door. <coughs> It isn't a human error, but something more systemic, like an army of red dots, watching and listening. Let's talk to the leaves, she says. They will have answers. So I conjure up from Project Gutenberg the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, hopefully green. Green intertinged, the dusty green of the rye, pale green eggs in dented sand, dark green lobsters. She footstops my lips with a finger. I fast forward the rest of the 45 green occurrences in that mighty book of Wister Whitman. Other colours have no place in our kingdom of red. Don't hyper-process the past, she says. They can detect nostalgia, even the literary kind. I shake my head and throw a pen into space. It falls flat on the ground, opening up into a well that returns a sound like water. Don't waste your graffiti quota, kid. You will regret it. Intermission. Do you remember you stole mum's lipstick? Do you remember the red spread like a virus on your three-year-old mouth? Do you remember, next to the lipstick, a small thing sealed in paper? Do you remember I asked you not to open it? Do you remember those bright, shiny things inside the wrapping paper and how I screamed? Do you remember the blades, the blood coating your mouth? Slightly scented 
but the red pigment only found in Chanel lipstick? Do you remember I set you by the window to show you the clouds over Victoria Harbour in the distance? Do you remember counting those glass and steel monoliths across the water from our own monolith? Do you remember how long it took the blood to congeal? Do you remember it was 1985, one year after the John Declaration was signed by Dan and Thatcher? Do you remember those tanks on the television? Do you remember the two indistinguishable eras of face masks? Do you remember the writing on the linen walls? Do you remember being blue or yellow, or both, or none? Do you remember those complex variations of green, and how suddenly, perhaps it was the wind, perhaps algorithms, a wide gap opened up between two leaves of grass, and the sun stacked straight into our eyes? Do you remember how to remember and disremember? Do you remember me? The reference of the color blue was the color that symbolizes the pro-government movement during the time of the protest, and the color yellow symbolizes the pro-democracy the program, the, the, the pro-democratic movement at that time. A difficult word for dance, isn't it? Democracy. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish with a poem called The Shape of the Wind. It's dedicated to a pop artist in Hong Kong called Yo Yo Shan. Um, she, just during the very difficult time of the protest, she, she sang a beautiful song about the wind. The shape of the wind. You asked me if I remembered my passport, my air ticket, the thirst for elsewhere packed in my rucksack. But we mustn't speak about the shape of the wind. The wind is the shape of a rubber band, a root system tightly packed, a cloud of tearful gas. The wind is travelling, though we mustn't speak about the shape of it. Perhaps there's no answer as you search everywhere for the different shapes, the so-called mutability. The hug at the letting go of the wind that we mustn't speak of. Perhaps there is a field of vision wider than memory. Perhaps it's the wind shapeless thoughts who blow you into a story of departure. Though we mustn't speak about the shape of departures. You asked if I remembered the missing, that had nameless shapes, and the gale force wind that carried diversions, divisions. But we mustn't speak of the lawful intuitions that shaped the shape of the wind. The shape of the wind is a passing rain the eyes sought crystals, a long distance call from where fear lodges. But we, but we mustn't speak of the wind or its shape and everything in between. Thank you.